The superhero video game Mount Rushmore. If we had to make one for four superhero games, which ones would they be? This is a video that I think should have been made a long time ago, but I guess it's not. Superhero video games have been there since I was born, since you were born, most likely, and there's been a lot of amazing ones, a lot of terrible ones, and a lot in between. I wanted to make a video on what the four, perhaps most objectively best uh, influential superhero games we've ever had is. Superhero games that maybe redefined the genre or maybe just so good that it earned its spot here or what have you. This is a tough video for me to make because I've been playing superhero video games since I was a kid. It's hard to choose. This video will touch on a lot of different titles in the genre because it gives me an excuse to do that, but I will pick out what I think are the four biggest superhero games ever. Well, maybe not biggest, but you know, really influential and great and uh, a culmination of all of that essentially. Will this video be biased? Probably, but I'll try not to be and be objective based more so. Let's just get started with the superhero video game Mount Rushmore. I'm really excited to make this video. I like talking about stuff like this and it's not typically just a Batman specific focus video like I normally do, but I'm still excited to make it. So if you enjoy this kind of stuff, let me know in the comments and I'll make more videos like this if the support is there. But please support the channel, subscribe, I'm trying to get 100k this year, that's my big goal. Share the video, like it, um, and a question, what is your favorite superhero video game of all time? I normally don't do questions like this, but I like reading comments like that, so if you would please, that would be awesome. Anyways, let's begin with the superhero video game Mount Rushmore. <clears throat> okay, so first off, I'm setting some ground rules. I am not picking games with the same superhero more than once. So, like, for example, if I pick a Batman game that's focused on Batman and you play as Batman, I'm not putting another Batman-focused game on Mount Rushmore because that's kind of stupid, right? It makes all of this less interesting. Like, if I were to, I'm not going to put Batman Arkham Knight and Batman Arkham Origins on Mount Rushmore or, like, some old Batman game like Batman Vengeance and Batman Arkham City or anything like that, right? That would, that would be dumb. I can only use one Batman game. I can only use one Spider-Man game. I can only use one Superman game. If you had a good one. However, that does not exclude superhero games that have those heroes in them. So, for example, if I put Batman Arkham Knight on here on Mount Rushmore, I'm still allowing myself to put like Injustice 2 on this list as well. Because while Injustice 2 does have Batman in it and he plays a big role in that game, it's not a Batman game. It's more so like a Justice League slash DC superhero game. Uh, see what I'm saying? So keep that in mind when I delve into this video. I'm aware that Batman and Spider-Man have the most superhero games, so if I do put them on this list, it'd only be one game from each perspective hero, because it'd be stupid if I didn't, just, right? It'd be kind of dumb. Okay, so let's start with Batman. Let's just get the big guy out of the way. So Batman has had so many games since consoles were pretty much released. There's too many to pick from, honestly, and even before the Arkham games, there were good Batman games. I mentioned it briefly, but has anyone played Batman Vengeance? That game was an amazing Batman game. It was based off the animated series TV show. It was a nice action adventure game with nice level designs, boss fights. It was a fun superhero game. I, I liked it a lot as a kid. Lego Batman. The Lego Batman games were a hit back in the day. The original especially. I love that game. So there are a lot of fun Batman games outside of the Arkham games to choose from, man. And that's the thing here too, right? You gotta look at things objectively. I can't just be like, oh, Arkham Knight was the most expansive Batman game ever made. That has to be put on here. There's more at play here. Like how groundbreaking the game was, how influential it was, did it set a bar, how it compared to other games during its time, that kind of thing. It's a difficult decision with Batman games, right? Because there are a lot. Picking one just makes it difficult, but after careful consideration, I do think it is an Arkham game that deserves its spot on Mount Rushmore. The Arkham games were truly, I think the most groundbreaking, not just Batman games, but superhero games in general, right? We've done the song and dance everywhere, so I don't want to beat a dead horse, but as a quick reminder, the Arkham games are what really broke into that AAA superhero gaming genre. The quality, the modern controls, it truly made you feel the Arkham games influence on every superhero game after it is just kind of present, right? People always compare new superhero games to Arkham City or Arkham Knight, like, yeah, this superhero game is good, but is it better than Arkham City? That kind of thing. But I have to pick just one, and that's the hard part here. But man, this one can go so many ways. I think the Arkham game that earned its spot on Mount Rushmore, though, by a sliver versus the other Arkham games, just a sliver, is Batman Arkham Origins Blackhead. Just kidding. I think it's Batman Arkham City. Now look, for me, it was a very difficult decision. It was either between Arkham City 
or Arkham Asylum. Like if Arkham City is 100, Asylum is 99.9. .9. Like I truly think it's between these two Batman games that earned a spot on the superhero game Mount Rushmore. Why did I choose Arkham City though? Well, let me explain. Now with Batman Arkham Asylum, that game was the first truly groundbreaking superhero game. Yes, it set the bar super high. So many lists have that as the best Batman game of all time, yeah. But here is why I picked Arkham City. Not only is Arkham City usually debated as the best Arkham game, I think it's also just as influential than Asylum. Now what Asylum brought was groundbreaking, but the ideas weren't fully perfected. Combat, stealth, seamless movement, the free flow, it's all great there, but you can tell there was much room for improvement. Arkham City acknowledged that, it made everything so much better. The combat, the self, the movement, traversal, everything felt buttery smooth. But Arkham City earned its spot here way more than just the gameplay that I'm talking about here. Its influence is just as big too as Asylum's. I mean think about it, how often do people compare new superhero games to City when they first release? Arkham City is a damn near perfect superhero game by a lot of people's standards with next to no flaws. There's a reason people consider this the best Batman game. And while Asylum revolutionized the genre, I think Arkham City revolutionized it just as much by fully perfecting and improving issues in the previous game and by taking risks, really breaking off the training wheels and going full throttle. You can see the influence this game brought. Reception for this game I launched, I felt was bigger and more acknowledged than Asylum's. A lot of people started with this game first and then went to Asylum. It created a foundation that other games strive to be in in the future after this game's release. And while I do acknowledge that's just weird not putting Asylum here, it really does feel weird. I would not be comfortable not putting Arkham City. Maybe it's bias, sure. And I also think that Origins of Night wouldn't be over City or Asylum if you were wondering. Arkham City perfected what a Batman game should be. There were great Batman games before the Arkham games, yes, but none of those games held that big influence really that this game did on this monumental level. Batman Begins movie-based game, fun game, not groundbreaking. Lego Batman, amazing game, but a lot of Lego games are. Batman Vengeance, another great game. Batman for NES, great game. Batman Arkham City? Genre redefining title. On top of that, it's just hard to go back to Arkham Asylum's controls after this game, right? Everything is just so improved. And just a touch on Arkham Knight, super unbelievable the game came out when it did. Fantastic visuals. Gameplay is actually perfected, right? It, it's the best of the series. As good as the game was, Arkham City set that groundwork for it on top of everything else. It, for me, it just wouldn't feel right to give Arkham Knight the spot here. And Arkham Origins, well, yeah, you know, it doesn't deserve a spot. It is my favorite story of the four, though. Because of how groundbreaking and influential Arkham City was for the rest of the genre going forward after the release, I truly believe that Batman Arkham City deserves a first spot on the superhero video game Mount Rushmore. Batman can beat Homelander. Okay, that's enough of Batman. Three more spots left here. What else could take the spot on the superhero video game Mount Rushmore? Let's get the next obvious one out of the way. Spider-Man. There's a lot more enjoyable games than Batman's, at least to me. Like, I played more Spider-Man games growing up more than Batman. There's a ton of fantastic ones. Ultimate Spider-Man might be my favorite Spider-Man game of all time. Personally, the comic art style will never age, man. It's so cool visually. The game had fun combat, an entertaining story. You can play as Venom, which was the biggest thing. Venom was playable, free roam, story missions, and this Venom was awesome. I loved the depiction. There were cameos like Wolverine and Johnny Storm. I'm, I'm just gushing. This isn't going on Mount Rushmore though, simply because I think another game is more groundbreaking. Let's talk about the Insomniac Spider-Man games. These Spider-Man games are the huge modern Spider-Man games, right? Before Insomniac, we really didn't have that AAA Spider-Man experience like the Arkham games. Insomniac created that and really put it on the map, especially the first game, Marvel Spider-Man PS4. The first game was the best one, it was just fantastic, at least in my opinion, it's the best out of the three. The risks they took, the modern, fully realized potential of Spider-Man and so on and so forth, I can talk about it all day. And let me tell you, that white spider just changed the course of history, like legit, it looks so good. But the influence it has on other Spider-Man now is something I didn't expect. Like it works so well and it's instant, like you see that, boom, that's Insomniac Spider-Man. It influenced other Spider-Man designs, like that one design choice of the white spider was super monumental. The Insomniac Spider-Man games are nothing short of spectacular, amazing, ultimate, let me stop. But which Insomniac game earns the spot on the superhero gaming Mount Rushmore? None of them. I don't think the Insomniac Spider-Man games earned a spot here. This is a bold decision I'm going to make, but I truly think that the 2004 Spider-Man 2 movie-based video game deserves a spot on Mount Rushmore. 
People are going to be upset by this, but let me explain. Let me explain before you start typing your comment. I'm not doing this to be different or not cool or anything like that. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. This is genuine. This game, I believe, is one of the most influential superhero games of all time. It's truly fantastic. Let me start you with one piece of information. You might think that the Arkham games invented the free flow counter system, right? No, they didn't. Or at least I would disagree. This game did that, 2004's Spider-Man 2. It had a combo-esque system, and when Peter's spider sense flashed, you can counter. This game does not get the recognition it deserves for this. It created that whole punch and counter gameplay. While it's fully perfected in the Arkham games, I truly think the influence was here, and it does not stop there, not whatsoever. Now, has the game aged? Yes, it did not age the best in my opinion, but the game came out in 2004. It featured a fully explorable New York filled with side activities, a pretty hefty story, many games, like a boss rush mode as well. This was like the first real open world superhero game. Not necessarily level based like previous superhero games. Like actually, right? I'm sure other superhero games prior had sandbox or free roam elements in them, but this one here really had an open world. It, it was the first experience for a lot of people. This game is super influential with superhero games. They challenged themselves to be the first to create this expansive world, the first to create this expansive combat, a progression system. When you tell me something that's an Insomniac Spider-Man 1, I can say that this game in 2004 had it as well. Engaging combat, upgrades, side missions, free roam. This game was like kind of the first of this genre to really go this big and expansive, and its influence is heavily present. The combat system is like Arkham's, like I said. A lot of this game's DNA is felt in modern superhero games decades later. So modern superhero games don't need to be free roam, but when they are, this is the influence, I think. I truly believe that Spider-Man 2 earns the spot. And this may be controversial to some, but I think this game paved the way for other superhero games after it. It walked so others could fly. You have to think about the time, 2004. Man, that's tough to say though. This game came out so long ago and it still holds up today with the gameplay and enjoyment factor for sure. It's very impressive how it does hold up. Like you can go back to this game today and have a fun time. It is a really fun game. You can enjoy it and you can't say the same for other superhero games coming or, like out during that time, right? This game was extremely ambitious. One of the most ambitious superhero games to come out of all time in my opinion and the recognition it gets is not enough in my opinion and I think the inf influence this game has brought onto this genre echoes through all the modern superhero games we love today and that should not go unnoticed. The Insomnia games are amazing, don't get me wrong, I love those games, I play them all the time, but if I were to like actually pick one for a Mount Rushmore, it would have to be this game because of what it did for superhero games going forward. And because of that, I'm putting this as the Spider-Man game to take a spot on the superhero video game Mount Rushmore. Controversial? Maybe. It depends on the comments when I watch this video. I don't know how people are going to react to this. But I truly believe this is the most influential superhero game. Is it the most enjoyable? No, not necessarily. But that's not all there is to it to be put on this list, right? Still a really fun game though. And now, this is where things get kind of tough. Because now there's no more Batman games or Spider-Man games. Where does that leave us now? This is where it can get tricky and also kind of fun. There's a ton of great superhero games that don't feature those characters primarily. X-Men Origins Wolverine's game was really fun. Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects, I love that game. Has anyone ever played that? Extremely fun game. Injustice is also another big contender. There's a lot of superhero games over decades to choose from. But after careful consideration, uh, I, I say careful loosely, I think one of the biggest influential superhero games that a lot of people recognize and has helped positively influence the genre and superheroes as a whole is Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I think Marvel Ultimate Alliance deserves a third spot on the Mount Rushmore. Now, Marvel Ultimate Alliance was a co-op beat-em-up game, having characters from all over the Marvel Universe. You can make a team of characters and play through these levels. Now, I put this game here for a few reasons. One, it is considered by a lot as one of the best superhero games of all time. And two, it's one of the better multiplayer superhero games. A lot of multiplayer superhero games are often misses, in my opinion, especially in modern times. This game helped shape a lot of that and put it into a game that's actually good and doesn't take itself too seriously, but it's still a lot of fun. The game, while not being the first ever multiplayer superhero game, I'm sure it's not the first, was one that a lot of people grew up with and why a lot of people may know about a lot of these Marvel characters and why they're fans of the characters to this day. 
this game is a legacy game. It's not about how it holds up now, even though I still think it's really fun to go back to. It's about what it marked for the genre. I feel like I keep talking about this. This game is not only a beat em up, but also features progression. Like it has RPG elements. It's a game that brought so many families and people together, whether you like it or not. The time and the place when a game comes out really matters. This coming out when it did, when we were all kids, or when it came out when superhero games weren't as big, opened a lot of people's eyes to the Marvel world. This was before the MCU, before all of that, and before Marvel really went mainstream. Multiplayer is something I think was a lot more valuable back in the day, and this game was perfect for it. It's still adored by many, and if you haven't played it and have friends who are down, this is like a great game to just pop in, get some snacks or some drinks, and have a good time. And that's the thing, a lot of superhero games can't say that for multiplayer, right? Just sit on the couch with your buddies and play. This is the pinnacle of that for Marvel games in my opinion, one of them anyway. And the fact that the game is loved by so many, it being naturally fun, it withstanding the test of time, everything it brought to the table all while educating people in the Marvel world, I think it's earned its spot. It's crazy, like even if you've never played this game, you've probably heard about it, right? That's how influential it is. I think there's not one person I met that's a kind of a fan of Marvel at least that doesn't know what Marvel Ultimate Alliance is. And this one's a hard one to play here. I was honestly considering games like X-Men Origins Wolverine or Guardians of the Galaxy from 2021. That's underrated in my opinion. There's a lot of great games to play here, but I truly think that time, like when a game come, like came out, plays a factor here. Maybe in 10 years, this list will change for me. Maybe I would put those other games over this. But the influence in how a game like this withstands the test of time all these years later and is still praised, there's something of value there that needs to be addressed. Marvel Ultimate Alliance plays a different twist, a unique take on the genre. I'm not going to say it's one of the first of its kind. I'll never say that because I don't want to be 100%. But it's one of the first breakouts for sure. It came out on a prime time for a lot of people, offering an unforgettable experience for a lot of us. Even if you've never played this game, like I said, you've likely heard of it, right? The, the influence is that strong. It's present all while being a fun game. The sequels aren't as memorable or enjoyable, but the first game I think earned its spot here because this game was a gateway, an access point, a start for people's passions for superheroes. This game did that for people. This is why I think Marvel Ultimate Alliance earns a third spot for me for the Mount Rushmore. Now for the final game, man. This one was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Even for the obvious ones like Batman and Spider-Man, those were kind of hard to pick too. There's a lot of really great superhero games out there. Uh, I was considering putting some Dragon Ball games there. Would, would Dragon Ball games be considered superhero games? I don't think so. So I didn't, I excluded those, but so far from my list, I'm trying to pick ones that I think had a huge influence on the genre, ones that are actually fun, ones that really try to go the extra mile, or do something to reinvent the genre. Something with a culmination of all of those in a nutshell, because there's a lot of amazing games out there like Lego Batman, for example, like I said before, but did it do anything to really innovate? I wouldn't say so. It's just an amazing game at its core to play. There's a lot of games to choose from, and honestly, if you're upset and hate me after this video, I get it. You can channel your hate into a like on the video. I heard that's the best way to relieve stress, but after careful consideration for the last game, Something that I feel earns the last spot here on the list for superhero video game Mount Rushmore it is a very influential game. It's one that I have a lot of personal ties with and I love to death, so it might be biased, might not be. The last spot for Mount Rushmore is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I think, is one of the greatest superhero games of all time, but also one of the greatest fighting games of all time as well. If you don't know, this game is a 2D fighting game where you pick three characters to put on your team from Capcom or Marvel and fight it out. This is the original everyone is here kind of thing, like the thing from Smash Ultimate. This game had a massive, massive roster of characters. Now, why do I think Marvel 2 is one of the best superhero games of all time? I'm not going to even touch on the critical acclaim this game got for its amazingly fresh and frantic gameplay the amazing visuals in the backgrounds. I mean, look at these sprites, dude. These are these kind of sprite-like graphics don't age, in my opinion. It's so gorgeous to look at. I'm not even gonna talk about the huge roster of characters, the quality of this game, even though I just did. What Marvel vs. Capcom 2 did for the genre is unforgettable. This game is debated by a lot of people as the best fighting game of all time. Uplifting this genre that is seen as smaller by some people, fighting games are, I feel like, is more smaller compared to other genres of video games but this one put it on the map for a huge amount of people to enjoy. 
even today, the game is still regarded as one of the best fighting games and one of the best superhero games of all time. And a huge reason as to why I put this game here is the scene, legacy, and memories it culminated for the past 20 plus years. There is a big tournament scene for fighting games, obviously. This game created so many, so many iconic moments, so many amazing experiences, brought so many people together, created so many friendships and relationships. Going out to major events to play this game with other people is something you cannot say for other superhero games. This game created that environment, created a different kind of history that nobody will ever forget. Like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 introduced so many people to so many of these superheroes. Personally, I know a lot of people that grew up with this game, myself included. My family and I used to vacation to this one place every summer that had an arcade with Marvel 2 playable, and I would play it every time I was there, and it's just unforgettable. The vibrant, colorful, expansive game here brought something different than other superhero games at the time. It wasn't an RPG or a single player game, it was a fighting game, multiplayer game. Something I wasn't interested in at the time at first until I played this game. It opened up a whole new world for people, including me. But I want to touch on that tournament scene more because this game did that for superhero fighting games. This game got a crowd of people together to watch other people play. Cheering and yelling and creating so many hype and exciting moments. These legacy moments and just moments in general like this are moments that people on this planet will just never forget. It created a landmark in their life. A scene like this is like family to them. In fact, for a lot of these people, it may be just that. The community built with this game created a lot of families. A lot of the notable players that grew up playing this game are best friends with each other, going to each other's weddings, things like that. I only know that because I followed the scene personally. I can see what this game meant to them. Had this game not existed, things like this would have never been possible. So you can see why this game is different. It, it's just different. But on top of all of that, it's just pure fun. No matter your skill level, you can just hop in and play this game. It's so full of life, so vibrant, it's just a happy game. There's so many things about this game that just makes you happy if you're a superhero fan. There's a lot of Marvel games from Capcom that are great, but this one I think not only had the greatest one of, if not the greatest legacy of the series, but also changed a lot of people's lives personally. Something that you cannot say for other superhero games all the time. Personally, my favorite of the series is the Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but looking at it objectively, I can confidently say MVC2 earned the last spot for the superhero video game Mount Rushmore. And there, that is what I believe is a superhero video game Mount Rushmore. Now look, I don't think it's that biased uh, thinking about it. Like these aren't my favorite games necessarily. I like Marvel 3 more than 2 like I said, and my personal favorite Spider-Man game is Ultimate Spider-Man, etc. But when I break down a game's quality, history, legacy, influence, what it did for the genre, I think these games are the best of all those worlds. And it's hard to say, right? Everyone's list will be different. Like, the Guardians of the Galaxy game from 2021 was a fantastic game, and I'm sure someone has that on their list. Insomniac Spider-Man games, I'm sure someone has that on their list. Injustice did a lot for superhero games as well. There's just a lot to choose from. But to me, a lot of those games are amazing games, but lack the influence that these games had. Or at least just they don't just they don't have as much as these games here. Could I be wrong? No, because I'm always right. I'm just kidding. Sure, I could be wrong. It's all opinionated, obviously, so no one could really be right, but yeah, this is what I think is the Mount Rushmore. These games all played big roles, and listen, maybe my rule of only having one superhero-focused game was dumb, but I don't think it is. It'd be boring if I put City in Asylum here, right, and Sony X Spider-Man 1 and this Spider-Man 2 game right here, too. It, it'll be... I think that's dumb, but that's all up to your interpretation, but there you have it. The superhero video game, Mount Rushmore. I know people disagree, so let me know. I'm actually curious. You can be blunt or you can be nice. It doesn't really matter, just don't be racist. And this video is not specifically Batman focused, so I hope you still enjoy it from me. Let me know if you do, and if you want me to do more kind of videos like this, talking about a broader superhero genre kind of thing. But as always, thanks so much for watching, supporting, all of that. Leave a like on the video, share it, subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100K this year. I would love that if I can get it. Amazing. If I can get it, but yeah, any support on the videos really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video Stay safe and uh, peace <laughs>